Hi there, this is Alex from 3D Chimera. Today I'm going to be showing you the Centratech Central 2 software um, as we prepare a print for the Centratech S2 3D printer. So uh, here's a quick sneak peek of the print we're going to be looking at. Uh, for those of you who have received sample kits from 3D Chimera before, these parts will look familiar. Uh, this is a strength part here. Um, this is our highly detailed part. This is kind of like a torture test part uh, that we print there. You can kind of see that upside down. Um, this is one of our keychains in the back here. We dye these different colors, put two different finishes. And this is one of our uh, new kind of no-touch um, parts that we pass out for, you know, keeping your hands, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess infection-free during COVID if you can. So um, just a quick preview from the top there. So what I'm going to do is, uh, in this session, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, how to use the software, how to import parts, how to delete parts, how to um, orient parts. We're going to go through like a slice, a preview um, of the parts and take a look at that, and then we're going to prepare the print file. So um, we're going to go through all those steps. It takes about five or ten minutes here. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove out all these parts, and we'll go ahead and start from scratch. Do you see on the right-hand side here, I got a bunch of little files listed, um, and this says drag and drop your STL files here. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the first one. This is our our STL uh, for the uh, touch-free tool. We'll just kind of place that in there. We're not going to worry too much about where these guys land because we're going to orient them in a moment. So I'm just going to drop all of them in one at a time. And there we are. So we'll go ahead and expand this window. And uh, now we can zoom in a bit here. All right, so now we're going to look at each part uh, individually and get that oriented. So let's kind of move these guys out of the way. Let's kind of put them over to the side, and we'll start with this part. So the first thing that we'd like to do is um, rotate this part into position. So I can rotate it manually here, or I can go into my um, settings here and type in a value. So in this case, I know I want that to be exactly 90. And I want to take advantage of this little bump out here. So this uh, this gray area is important to note. This is actually where the IR sensor for the Centratech S2 measures the temperature. Um, around this perimeter, um, we have like a continuous um, lamp that heats up the surface. And so we could measure that point at any location. This happens to be the one that we do measure it at. Um, and it's really important that since we're using that as our reference point, we don't want to have any parts in that little area. So we want to keep that free. Uh, during the process here. So we'll grab our next part, which is our our uh, like torture part or a detail part there. And um, for this particular part, I'd like to rotate this like 180 degrees. So here we can see I could rotate that and get that into position. Now, if we look at this from a side view, what you'll notice is that even with these two parts that we've just put in, one was down on the build surface, right? And we can do that manually at any time, drop that down. Or one is floating in air. Now we can also drop that down manually, or we can move it manually around, right? So in this case, we'll go ahead and drop it down. Now, if we look at it from the top view again, we can just reorient back into the positions that we'd like. So we'll kind of drop this guy in the corner for now. Now let's get our cushion component in here. So we're going to rotate this one. Now this one we're going to kind of eyeball the angle because we want to give ourselves as much space as possible in here. We want to make sure that drops down to the surface. All right. Now this one, oops, just hit Control Z on that. I, I grab the rotating component instead of moving it. And now we're going to go ahead and rotate this guy. And we'll drop that over into position about there. And finally, we've got this uh, very detailed part here. And so we want to make sure that this guy is oriented with all the details facing down. That helps it to kind of stick in the powder as it prints. So we'll begin to rotate that here. We can see we're going this direction. And we'll put that in at 90. And we'll bring this into this position. Now this one, we'll go ahead and uh, manually adjust the position of it. So let's see if we can get a clear view of it. We get a pretty good view of it here. And we can bring that down. We want to make sure that that's right near the build surface. Now we'll notice this this particular part's also floating in space a little bit, and we'll bring that down just a hair. 
All right. So as we look at our parts here, we can see that all the parts are oriented on the build surface. I'll go ahead and turn those rotating parts off. We can see everything's fitting nicely within the build volume. If we look at it from a top view, there's a little bit of an overlap happening with this part. So we want to make sure that we move these into a position where nothing's touching. On the Centratec S2, we try to keep about a half a millimeter of distance uh, between any parts. That way we prevent them from fusing together. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, since we want to most efficiently use our space, we can see um, down in this area here, we could probably stack two of these guys together. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate that. We'll look at it from the top again and kind of move it into position there. That looks about right. Now we'll look at it from the side again. Here, we'll just move this down just above that part. Now, if I look here, I can notice that this part, which I've manually adjusted before, I actually drove a little bit through the bottom of the build surface. So I'll move that up. Make sure we've got a little bit of space there for this guy. No problem. All right. Um, likewise, with this piece, I think we can double this up as well. So we'll go ahead and add a second one. We'll look at it from the top view. Make sure it's in the right position. And we'll look at it on that side view again. Now that height would be okay. It looks about even with this high spot here. I'll bring it down just a hair um, so that we've got plenty of space in there. Now um, we can see obviously this is our high spot and that's okay. Um, if we wanted to, we could try and put a little bit more parts in there, but I think we've got a good, good build volume here. So the next step, once you've got everything oriented, is to uh, analyze the part and actually prepare a slice. So here we're actually uh, splitting this up into layers. And within this tool, we can actually view every single layer one at a time. So, you know, this is layer 46, this is layer 88, um, or we can actually um, hold the up button on our keypad and actually drive um, our way through, effectively seeing exactly what the part's going to look like as it prints. So I'm just going back down here. We can see everything looks good. We don't have anything overlapping. Um, so we did a good job setting it up. So from here... We're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to save the print job. So um, I have a folder for this guy on our desktop. So we'll just call this print job live demo. We'll go ahead and save that. Now we're going to generate the print file. Now the print file is, for the printer is going to come out as a PEX file. PEX is uh, the format, and this is just going to grab the, the last STL name uh, or the STL name of the first file that was imported there. So in this case, um, we want to make sure that it has that same name as before, uh, print job underscore live demo. But of course, we want to replace the file type here, not with STEC, but with PEX. So PEX is the print file that goes on the machine itself. So we'll hit save. Then I'll run through that slice again and save everything out. Now the PEX file, um, that's what we put on the machine. That's an encoded version that the printer is going to use to interpret all sorts of things. So when we plug it into the MHS, it tells the printer exactly how much powder you need. So you don't have to do any crazy measurements. You just basically, the platforms will drop down. You fill it up with powder. Um, then we'll put that same file on the LSS, the centering component. And um, on the centering component, it's going to preheat the system. It's going to have all the controls of the print file. And it also controls all the cooldown for that as well. So it's um, you know kind of like an all-in-one file. The other file format, the STEC, um, we save that because that has all of our parameters that we used here to set this up. So um, you know if we were to come back you know six months later and go, boy, I really like that print. I like to print it again. I can't remember what it looked like. Um, we can import a print job. So again, we can go here into that live folder. We can grab our Aztec, and we'll see it's going to bring everything up exactly as it was. So, um, you know, if for whatever reason we wanted to maybe move this around slightly, we could do that, and then we could start a new a new print. So it's um, it's a pretty versatile software, pretty easy to use. There's not a ton of functions. Um, really, what you're looking at is orienting the parts and uh, rotating them into position, and then uh, running, running through that preview. One thing I'd like to show you guys on the preview here that um, 
I skipped over just a moment ago is that this actually does show you your whole print. So if we were to zoom in, let's see if I can zoom in in a good spot, you can actually see exactly the layer lines that that laser is putting down. So it's a pretty useful software um, if you're trying to figure out, you know, where uh, where the details of your parts are going down, what those are going to look like. You can actually see that. So um, that's it. That's our our demo of uh, Centratech Central Two, and uh, that that's what you need to know to get started with printing on the S two.